Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. We are live with your daily news. We've done this a little bit later on because we have been dead busy filming amazing content for the website. Going there and pushing it because it deserves to be pushed because it's the crux of what we do. Uh, it was just from the three-part special, the Liverpool Summer Transfer Special. We did keep sell alone. We decide for every single player in the Liverpool squad and a lot of the under-23s as well, whether we keep selling or loaning them. Then we moved on to target rater. We rated the likelihood of every single Liverpool Summer Transfer target. It's all on a big board. It's brilliant. Have you ever seen the cool wall on Top Gear? It's better than that. It's a bit smaller, but it's better for two reasons. Because there's more colour to it, it's red, and it doesn't have fucking Jeremy Clarkson involved. Um, but, uh, yeah, and the third part is the squad depth builder. How do Liverpool grow squad depth if we're selling a number of players that everyone wants us to sell? Really, really good stuff. Anyway, I digress. Let's get stuck into the daily news. And a um, couple of updates. Obviously, I talked about... Virgil van Dijk yesterday, everything was looking rosy and positive and he was he's bang up for joining Liverpool. That remains the same from, from all accounts. Virgil van Dijk wants to play for Liverpool Football Club. However, uh, reports coming out yesterday were that Southampton are going to report Liverpool for their approach to Virgil van Dijk. Um, which got everyone kind of going, eh, eh, and people were asking me about it live during the during the show yesterday, and I had no idea about it. I've since looked into it. It's interesting that you go and you look at the main sources for it, and the BBC reporting it. BBC haven't updated anything since yesterday, and the last update on it was Southampton to report Liverpool. Now, this story's moved on a little bit in that, I think the Mirror are now saying that Southampton are, are, are saying that they're demanding between 65 and £75 million pounds for Virgil van Dijk. Um, I don't know how to react to that genuinely. I My big hope with all this is that the, the threatening of the tapping up charges and the, and the, the slapping on of the price. Like my, my reading of the situation is that Southampton kind of wanted to have this crazy bidding war because they've looked at it and gone, oh, Man City are interested, oh, Chelsea are interested, oh, Liverpool are interested. Uh, oh, Man City and Chelsea, well, they'll, pay all, they'll pay all kinds of money. They'll pay £50 million for John Stones. Um, they pay £50 million for Raheem Stale and Man City. We think what we can get for Van Dijk. And, um, and he's come out and gone, nah, I don't want to play for them, I want to play for Liverpool. And they've gone, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, so I think there's some of it's a bit of posturing and a bit of annoyance. And then it's one of those things. What what you would imagine will happen is Van Dijk will have to put a transfer request in, and Liverpool will probably if you know if if we don't end up at the you know in, in major hot water or whatever, you know we 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 might end up getting him for slightly slightly more than we were hoping to pay for him. But by and large, that's my hope anyway. But it does it, what it does mean in real terms is that it's probably going to take this a little bit longer to get sorted, um, which is kind of similar to what's happening with. Mo Salah as well. So Liverpool apparently, again, according to Sky Sport, not willing to meet Roma's asking price. Now they're saying it's £35 million. And I, I again I my suspicion is, and this is not this is not sourced, by the way, I think it's slightly more. I read I did read something saying that Roma, because of FFP, need to generate more money. So they're kind of hoping to get as much of that done in one hit as possible. So they're playing, they're playing a, a little bit of hardball. And again, this when when you start the week and I was going, these deals should be done by the end of the week. And then you hear that there's these kind of complications. It does make you kind of roll your eyes and go, oh, God. And you start to let the fears creep back in and blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, something I pointed out on, I think it was yesterday's new show, but it's worth reiterating again, is these players do not... By Jürgen Klopp's sort of modus operandi for what he wants from transfers, he doesn't need these guys in for until July, basically. So we've got three weeks until the, the transfer window actually opens for the start. Three weeks until the players start to, at least three weeks until the players start to come back for pre-season training. And even if you think about last season, um, Gini Wijnaldum didn't join until we were over in the States. And Manning, for whatever you want to count him, didn't join until we were over in the States. Clavan didn't join until at the back end of the US tour. But he did get the likes of, obviously, he got the Mane deal in, in early and what have you. And Carius as well. Um, so... My point is I'm trying to make is that it's annoying and there's going to be a bit of annoyance that, that, that follows off the back of this because we just want it done because everyone's envious of Man City and the ability to just get signings done. 
but it, it's not a I, I just it's just not a big deal at the moment. Um, but what we are seeing though, the big news story today in terms of transfers is Liverpool being linked with a forty million pound move for Gelson Martins, which came out of nowhere this morning. Sky Sports are reporting that we've been scouting him all season long as well, which is great. It means we kept that quiet, which is good. Um, 22-year-old, right winger. I've got the stats here. Scored six goals and got 14 assists in 32 appearances last year, which is pretty good. I had a quick look at him on YouTube. Fine, you know, fast, skillful. He scores a lot of really scrappy goals, which I actually don't think is a problem. Um, comes in off the wing as well. Gets involved century, which is great. Kind of simple. We see Mane do a lot of that as well. So he does look like he fits the bill. Now, there's two questions. Questions and I, I actually I'm going to come to your comments on on YouTube in, in, in a moment. Um, I did have one. It's still here. That's amazing. Uh, Francis um, in, in the comments asks: Is Gelson Martins an alternative to Salah? Now, Steve Hall, my um, my partner in crime on Redman TV at the moment, who will be doing the Reds transfer roundup show with me to go out tomorrow on the website. Um, he believes that we are actually in for two wingers. And again, I think that's more his personal beliefs than anything he's necessarily seen, proved or sourced. Um, I've talked about this a lot, about how Liverpool need to... If Phil Coutinho's the lad who's most likely to be poached by Barcelona next, then get his replacement in. Now. I mean, I'm not saying selling this summer. He's going to go next summer or the summer after. Get his replacement in as soon as possible and get him blooded in. And, you know, whereas Salah's very much a, a player for now... He's absolutely peak prime. I think he's 24 years old. Um, he's ready to step up right now into the prime of his career. Martins is a couple of years younger and maybe he's got a little bit more development to do. I wouldn't be surprised to see us still get get someone of prime age and someone with a little bit more a little bit more learning and growing to do as well. So, but equally, I think it's canny that, that Liverpool are doing it this way because. I think it's a whether we Roma and no and every little no one knows that that's what we're doing and it is perfectly reasonable to suggest we might only go for one guy. Um, Roma will be sat there now thinking, oh shit. Well, for the start, they might be thinking, well, Liverpool are going to spend forty million, which might be an issue. But the, you know, they're thinking, well, well, hang on a second, Liverpool have valued this guy how they valued him. It's either they're going to move on if they complete this deal, there's thirty odd million pounds that we're not going to be getting. Um, so is Liverpool playing a little bit of, a little bit of business tactics I kind of got no problem with that I'd like to see us sign both um, but equally I've got no problem with us not being refused to be, be held over a barrel over transfers I do want us to go out and spend what needs to be spent but as I said the other day I think Van Dijk is very much the top target and I think we'll pay what needs to be paid for him I think everyone else I think it's just I know we all want us to go mental but there is smart business to be done, and I think you don't want to be you don't want to be stupid in terms of doing whatever. I think you, if you've got the money to spend, which we clearly have, I think we can afford to be a bit cocky and a bit confident with. It. I like that personally, provided of course that we ultimately get the business done at the end of the day. But has any thoughts on Gelson Martins? Have you actually seen him play, and not just on YouTube? Any Portuguese league watchers in the comments? Please do let me know. Um, I'll come to your comments now because I think that's largely what we've got. Um, Harry Tonus says, if we get a transfer ban, I will scream. Yeah, I, yeah, that would be pretty shit, wouldn't it? What an opportunity for Trent Alexander-Arnold and, uh, and Ben Woodburn and Rian Brewster and Shea Ojo if we had a transfer ban. But I'll be honest, I, you know, I, Southampton do a lot of this. They do a lot of posturing on this stuff. And, uh, you know, I think the point is, they make if they start doing that, this is how business gets done in football. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't like it necessarily. But if they start complaining about the way things are done like that, you'll find that there'll, there'll be fewer people willing to sell players to Southampton because, you know, if you start grassing people up every time the um, every time someone talks to one of your players and whatever, I think there's a lot of agents who be very, very upset. Um, <laughs> Munch is red to so simply fuck Southampton. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Milesy20. I am Milesy20, says Paul. Hello. Uh, Jace Phyllis says, give me some truth. I think I do that on a daily basis. Uh, Newman uh, and Afghan riot squad. <laughs> One pay Jack nudes. Who doesn't? Um, and followed by the fried mango. Where's Chris? Chris is on holiday for two weeks. So, I, you know, if I'm not good enough, unlucky. Um, <laughs> 
So Ben Patish is so Cater will not come to Liverpool. I'm not sure about that. I think that I think that's a move that Liverpool will 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 address in, in due time. I do think he's a, he is he's definitely very much a target. Um, we will be discussing. So we've got the, we've got this three part special show going up on the website, and Red's transfer roundup is more of a sit down stuff like we normally do. Bit of a jumping on point. So if you haven't subscribed to Red TV before and you want catching up on all the targets and where they fit in and what we're likely to pay and all the latest things, all the things that you're likely to see develop over the coming weeks. That show, we're filming that today. It's going out tomorrow. Go to redmentv.com, start your free month trial and, and, and have a look and get on it. Um, Kieran Howard to Virgil van Dijk is not worth 75 million. Uh, are you saying he's worth the same amount as Suarez? I mean, to be fair, you know, transfer values have moved on a little bit. 75 million pounds for a centre, centre back is just it's crazy money. It's absolutely crazy money. But here's the thing if Man City. If Liverpool were like liked him, and then Man City came in and bought him for seventy five million pounds, we'd all go, "Well, that's Man City," and we wouldn't really bat an eyelid to it. And and maybe look, I've said it before. I'm not keen on Liverpool becoming a club that that just spunks money senselessly on things. There must be better you can spend. There must be better things you can spend seventy five million pounds on. Would be my opinion. But I do think there's something to sending a message. Seventy five million is probably a bit too far for the for the message to be sent. Um, but I would like to see us do what needs to get done to sign to sign Van Dijk. If I'm honest, I think it's a sign. It's a real sign of um, of, of intent, uh, of intent. Um, Luis Suarez, not the Luis Suarez. Uh, from Salah to this guy, and then fish. Here's the thing: we say that, but again, it's as though this is this is what we need to be resistant to as much as possible. Like two weeks ago. I know a lot of people have seen how good Salah's been for Roma in the last year, and he has been good since he's left Chelsea. But still, a lot of people who are like, "We want Salah." Gives a fuck about Salah, um, and a lot of people still think he gives a, gives a fuck about Mane a year ago, Wayne Alden, blah blah blah. I trust Liverpool to have the, the scouting in order, if I'm perfectly honest. And so, whilst I had genuinely never heard of this guy, someone who's good, who's got 14 assists and six goals in 32 appearances, 22, in, you know, it's but and there's a decent side. That's fine, you know. If that's a decent enough return, I would expect that to get better as he gets older as well. So yeah, I, I'm I'm not getting too I'm not getting uh, too upset by anything. Uh, just Kenny Martial, I'd love Martial, mate. That'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> Afro Kid Ten, how is Ricardo Rodriguez moving for fifteen million and we're not in for him for fuck's sake? I just done that loud. That was all in caps. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving down then. More shouts of pay Jack nudes. Of course there is. Of course there will be. And you're probably never going to see them. Don't miss this point. Best thing to do is keep asking for them. Keep asking for pay Jack nudes. Believe. That's all I'll say. Uh, right, okay. Let's go down to the most recent stuff. Thanks very much everyone who's been commenting. Um, and for obviously people who subscribe to the Redman channel. Bloody, bloody, blah. Actually, I want to ask um, how many people for the start... Um, obviously it, it depends on, on, on legal age and whatever but obviously vote tomorrow people say keep politics out of football and keep politics off Red Men TV I'm dead sorry but this is my channel I created this channel from fucking scratch from money that I had to beg and borrow and, and scrape up and borrowed equipment and borrow that to make this what it is today so you watch that because it was all because I fucking could be asked to make this channel a thing so I want to talk about politics I'm going to that being said I'm not going to tell you which way to vote I'll do that on my channel. So go to Mates TV and check that out if you want to know how I'm voting and why I'm voting that way. All I'll say, if you if you are of legal age to vote in this country and you are registered to vote and you do not vote tomorrow, no matter which way you choose to vote, you are an absolute cunt. I'm telling you this now and you've got no place in fucking society. You don't deserve to be part of our country and our society. I'm saying that right now. So it sounds a bit harsh and it is because voting in the general election is the most important thing you're probably going to do this year and possibly you might even do for a number of years to come. I won't tell you which way to vote. All I'll say is there's one party that doesn't want young people voting um, because you hold the, in your hands the power to make this country a better place. That's all I'll say. Um, so listen, in, in a less serious sense, you know, Sometimes when you, sometimes it's hard to get yourself out of bed and get yourself off the couch. And while I will never condone, condone uses of certain substances and what have you, sometimes if you get up and you crack on it a bit early, it saps your motivation to get out the house and to do things. All I'll say is put it off for half an hour, go and vote. Exercise your democratic right to have a voice and then go back to doing however you want to. 
entertain yourselves for the rest of the day is all I'll say um, yeah listen oh, actually, Ashley's system music do you think we'll add to our coaching staff this summer I think we will maybe bring in a, a senior goalkeeper who can take over from the Manninger kind of thing dual role of being our third choice goalkeeper and a little bit of coach as well um, anyway yes thanks very much for watching keep your comments coming in don't forget to subscribe to the Redmen TV if you're watching this as live, after the fact on YouTube, click there to subscribe to the Red Men TV. Click there to subscribe to my channel, Mates TV. And there's the politics video that I mentioned. It wasn't in yesterday's news show. Why wasn't it, Tom? Because uh, Tom's a dickhead. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, click there and watch it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please do tomorrow. I can't stress this enough. Go and vote. Take back the future for your country.